see Pau Gasol one more time as a Laker. How doctors think that he needs about two weeks until he's able to return to full basketball activity. I wanted to play. I wanted to be able to finish the season and be out there with my teammates, but uh, unfortunately it couldn't, couldn't happen. What is happening right now is Pau is being shown on the big scoreboard. The great Lakers over the last six and a half years, and this could be it. His final parents at Staples Center. Gasol was always near and dear to Laker fans' hearts, and he hasn't shut the door on a reunion either, saying this to ESPN. There is meaning in history there, I'm not going to lie. It would be very special, and now that my brother Mark is there, even more special. But I'm not in a position now to be very demanding. I don't have 10 offers on the table. Could you see Pow back in a Laker uniform, Mike Bresnahan? What a great story of redemption it would be, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, he hasn't played in almost two years. He's 40 years old now. Um, it was really great to cover him. One of my top five favorite people ever to interview, very professional with media. So many great times with the Lakers. Their, their fortunes uh, really did turn around in 2008 when he was acquired uh, from uh, Memphis. Got the three finals in a row. I'd love to see it happen. I just don't know if it will. Uh, he didn't play a lot when he was still playing. Just kind of uh, get towards the end of his career. It would be a nice symbolic thing, though, maybe later in the season. Well, first of all, congratulations to Pau and his wife on their lovely uh, baby yeah. uh, daughter. Yeah. And I, Ali, I am so heavily biased here. Uh, like Brez, I loved covering Pau. Um, just love Pau in general. So I, I, it's really hard for me to take that out of a, oh, would, how would you like to have Pau Gasol on your roster? It's like, where do I sign? You know, so it, I, without even thinking about the basketball. And I'll leave that to, you know, that's what Rob Palinka is, is going to have to figure out. And I know there are some roster situations here with without getting too much into it, but a hard cap. And do they want to carry a 15th player up until later in the season, like possibly around January? Uh, I don't know the answer to that for sure. But, yeah, let, I'm just laying my cards on the table. I'm super biased. If Powell comes back in any fashion, uh, I'm here for it. You'll be so, the first guy to talk to him. So there's so. <laughs> the one element of just Powell returning because we love Powell. But yeah. then there's the other element. Oh, yeah, his brother's here. How cool would that be to see the both of them on the roster together yeah, that would in be, Los Angeles? That would be amazing for sure. Uh, and it's, it's just like there are a couple situations in the NBA, you know, where like the Holiday Brothers, uh, mm -hmm. Giannis uh, playing with his brother Thanasis in Milwaukee. Like I'm always here for that kind of stuff. I've got identical twins. Now they aren't twins, but just the brother thing always hits me with a little soft spot too. So look at me. I'm just emotional today. Uh, I feel like I like that press. <laughs> Call me down. Well, I mean, it would be an amazing story. I, I don't want to uh, dry your tears for you, but uh, definitely Man. something really fun to think about if it did happen. And those two always just kind of missed each other throughout their throughout their careers. Uh, one going to Memphis, one leaving Memphis. Obviously, uh, the Lakers drafted Marcus Saul way back in the day. Uh, it would be cool to see uh, both those guys in purple and gold. Just don't know if it is going to happen. I was going to give you a Kleenex, but we only have sanitary wipes. So. Uh, there you go. I, don't, did, don't put that in your eye. Did eyeball. I tell you this? That, that for during the playoffs, I didn't I realize that you me. weren't supposed to put these on your face. And How'd that so, work out for you? And, well, I, <laughs> Looked okay. Looked like you were crying. Looked I'm like still you were here. emotional. I'm still here, but I, and then somebody found out, and they're like, wait, it says explicitly, do not put on your eyes. Do not put on your... And I was just putting it all over my face. Yeah, there's like actual sticky notes. Like, not only does it say it on the packaging, but there's an actual added sticky note, which this yep. is a great segue. It's my bad. Sports <laughs> is a much-needed distraction from what is going on in the world these days. NBA players are aware of the safety concerns regarding the COVID-19 pandemic globally and realize that with no bubble this season, it's all about self accountability it's gonna be a lot tougher to be honest um the bubble you know you were safe here you know you just don't i mean the league has sent all these guidelines about not going to you know bars and restaurants and clubs and all this stuff so to try to make it safe for us but um we got to hold each other accountable you know each player got to hold another player accountable um you know, and the player should hold himself accountable just for the simple fact that, you know, you don't want to be able to, you know, go into a season and go into a playoff series or whatever without a guy because of, you know, he, he was um, careless about COVID. You know, now he's quarantined for 10 days. Now you're putting yourself and the team at risk. Um, and you don't want to do that. It's going to be a lot of pressure uh, because, you know, we did get the memos. Uh, and one of the things that was on there were, uh, if your kid have games during this time, we can't uh, attend it. You know, that's going to be hard, you know, for guys that, like, support their kids in the basketball and like, anything else that they do you know, outside of their home. It's going to be hard trying to uh, support them doing that, you know. 
and then having a conversation with your wife about her friends, that's more stress. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's a lot. You know, but I I figured, you know, uh, since we're back working, you know, I, I figured that the conversations and like the time that we hang around friends and stuff will be limited because of our job. I mean, we listen to the experts on what's going on with the climate. You know, as far as COVID, um, you know, and. You know, keep your family in the mask when we leave the house or whatever the case may be and be cautious of where we travel to, um, be cautious who we're around. Um, you know, right now you just try to do everything that you can to protect your family um, and uh, hopefully you can stay safe and, and stay healthy. Um, obviously, that's the most important thing um, than anything. Um, you know, so, you know, that's what it's been all about. I mean, obviously, you know, we are all um, hoping that the world gets back to normal at some point. Um, you know, so we can get back to kind of some normalcy, um, you know, with our kids being back in school, our kids miss being in school. Um, they're sick and tired of doing these Zoom um, classes. Um, you know, they love being around their other classmates. They love, you know, you know, being in classrooms and, and having fun. And I understand that, too. What's our feeling, guys, about the situation with the pandemic and trying to get through the season without any setbacks? Do we think there will be some? Well, you know, Mike and I are both uh, football fans, and we, we've seen, obviously, how bad it's been at the uh, NCAA level, the NFL level, a bunch of cancellations, postponements uh, by these games. You know, it's going to happen in the NBA. It's foolish to think it's going to be as bulletproof as it was in the bubble, which was completely non-permeable, yeah. it, it turned out. It's not the case now. There's going to be traveling. Uh, there's going to be mostly empty arenas, which, which I think is good for now. But uh, I, there will be shutdowns, uh, individual teams, I would say, obviously some players as well. Uh, there will be postponements. You just have to be ready for it. Hopefully, it'll be very limited. Football, were you talking about Wisconsin Northwestern, or was that a different? Yeah, just okay. when I was getting over it, we have to have Mike on the show today. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was who he was referring <laughs> to, Ali. And uh, by the way, it doesn't say anything on the front about not touching your face. You have to flip it. All right. Enough you went to that. Northwestern yeah. and you don't know how to read a <laughs> so It was on the bottom. All right. There, there were Not some typos on it. I, yeah. I will say that. Uh, but like seriously, in terms of COVID, yeah, I, I think that you hit on it, Mike. Like when you're incorporating not just the players themselves, but all of the next degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Families and kids and parents. And even if everybody's being safe, it, it can still transmit much differently than it might have or clearly it didn't in Orlando in the bubble. So I think that you have to absolutely do your absolute best. And the players, I, I hope and think, will do that for the most part. Um, they had an experience. They saw last year, right? They saw the reward for being diligent, and that meant they could stay on the floor. And to have LeBron and AD mentioning it so specifically, that's mm -hmm. great. Uh, there are other franchises that have not had their leaders uh, be that diligent about it and kind of send the wrong message to the rest of the team. So I think they're going to do their absolute best. If it happens, uh, they have the people that can help deal with it. But, yeah, you have to be as diligent as possible. Absolutely. Well said. And do not put sanitary wipes on your face. No. Still to come, Tyler Hero gave high praise to management and his head coach. Both of those guys just kind of, you know, keep me in the loop, you know, during the season. You know, Frank is always asking questions about the team. You know, um, if he's, you know, up in the air about a decision, he comes to me and LJ. Uh, Rob does the same thing about the team. Um, trades, uh, you know, you know, about a guy, if you want to bring a guy in. You know, do we like a guy? Do we don't like a guy? How can this guy help our team? So um, I think that the relationship just, you know, and that trust has just been built throughout the course of the year. Uh, from day one, um, they've been they've been uh, two guys who who want nothing but the best for this team for each player, and um, like I said, keeping me and, and Brian in the loop about every single decision, where, whether it's you know with Frank with practice, um, what do you guys want to do today? How your bodies feel? Do you think we should you know just you know watch film today? How the guys feeling? So you know he always want to keep us fresh and keep us sharp. Um, but it's days that we need to work as well, and he 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 talks to his captains about that. Um, and like I say, Rob is always trying to improve the team and keeping me and Brown in the loop. So, um, you know, for a coach and a GM to always keep you know their their players in the loop, um, it just builds that trust with them. And like I say, you know, going through my contract negotiation, I didn't you know have to worry about you know if the team was going to be you know as good as last year. Um, because those two guys know what they're doing and was able to put a, another great team together. AD really walking us through that process, guys. He and LeBron are kept in the loop on every decision. Mm. Is that unique to have a relationship like that? Maybe other franchises, but not with the Lakers. I mean, Kobe Bryant and Dr. Jerry Buss, they would talk continually about how to improve the team. 
uh, you know, Jerry Buss would call him directly and say, what do you think of this guy? We're thinking of trading for him or signing him. So the Lakers have been doing this with their star players literally for decades. So nothing new here. Good to see it's being continued with a, a new front office face in Rob Palenka, relatively new. And uh, the, the foundation is there. Glad it's still happening. For an average NBA team, this can be a real tricky thing uh, because there are only about man, anywhere from five to ten each year actual superstar players. They play both ends of the court um, that are intelligent enough to really be involved in the process that there aren't a lot in that. But then many franchises have players who they sort of their whoever their best player is that they feel like they have to be that involved as well. And it just it's not going to pay off as much if that player isn't LeBron, if that player is not Anthony Davis, because, again, there are only so many of those guys. Lakers happen to have two of them. So in the case of LeBron <laughs> and AD, of course, it makes a great sense. I think Rob and Frank have approached that uh, really well, clearly. And I think that they saw the reward in that by the extensions uh, that were signed last week. Yeah, it's not like the Lakers, you know, in 1996 were going to Kobe and saying, hey, uh, what can we do for you? Hey, you know, who do you want here? Who, who should we get rid of? And nor will they do it with, with Taylor and Horton Tucker this year. You have to earn it. And obviously, AD and LeBron have been in the game for a long time. Obviously, they've earned that, that kind of two-way street with, with uh, management and ownership as far as, yeah, We'd like to hear about some personnel possibilities. That's what I think is very important to understand here is it's not a one-sided no. situation. I mean, you're earning it as players, you're earning it as a franchise, and you're finding and striking that balance uh, in a very, very positive and healthy way. Yeah. Because it could go, and we've seen it go, the wrong direction mm -hmm. either way. It's a good point, and I also think there's a balance between consulting and mm -hmm. discussing, but then the executive still has to make the final the call. Decision. And, yeah. and LeBron's been pretty clear, and Ali, you know, know, of course, going back to Cleveland, where he's like, he doesn't want to be the one that has nope. to make, like, that's not his job. But if, he, if somebody asks him his opinion as a smart basketball player, um, you know, perhaps he can give it to the coach, to an executive, etc. But still, that's ultimately, in this case for the Lakers, it's Rob Palenka's decision. Uh, and I think that AD and LeBron appreciate being in that loop, but it is the executive that's got to make the choices. And, and to those guys' credit, the players from this standpoint, they've earned it. Uh, yeah, especially those two guys, special. for sure. Yep. Still to come, LeBron.